And uh, welcome here. Today I will be uh, talking about our exploratory research for software architecture for systems that use quantum computers. Today I am Daniel Justice. I'm a software developer at the Software Engineering Institute. I am also an instructor for quantum computing courses at CMU. Moving on. But here uh, we had one main question that has popped up in the last couple of years. And it's, if I incorporate quantum computers into my system, how will they impact my quality attributes, such as performance, maintainability, security, and many others? There's, there's quite a few out there. Right? Um, and this is the overarching question which has really uh, focused this project. But this breaks out into millions of questions, uh, potentially. But here are a few that we hear very consistently, such as, what are my most valuable quality attributes? What can I use quantum computers for? What advantage will they give? Right? And you know, what quantum hardware should I use? Should I use this vendor A or that vendor B, or should I try to procure my own? Which would be a heavy lift, but you might want to. Over on the right here, uh, we have a figure that comes from the paper that you see underneath, which shows what type of speed up we're expecting to potentially see. This is for a potentially quadratic speed up of uh, using quantum computers, where as the problem size increases, you can see that blue line. That's the classical computer. As you increase the problem size, the time it takes to solve doesn't increase linearly. So you double the size. It's not going to double the time. As you increase the size, it will potentially exponentially grow, right? So doubling the size might take weeks, and then doubling again might take years. And quantum computers for specific algorithms are going to actually see a linear crossover here, right? And so they don't see that doubling in time, and so they could potentially show an advantage. This paper specifically in this figure is showing that for certain types of problems, uh, you, this crossover is going to be at the point of weeks of computation, right? And we know that we're starting to get into a realm of uh, classical compute where weeks of computation is starting to become standard for a single core. Uh, machine learning is a great uh, example of this, but you'll also see this in, again, medicine making, biology, protein folding. OK, when we say uh, software architecture for quantum computers, we're not talking about inside the quantum computer. And let's define what we mean by a quantum computer first, right? So a quantum computer is the software and hardware that controls the quantum processing unit. The quantum processing unit is where you actually house the qubits, and they need to interface with classical controls in order to manipulate their states in order to do their uh, computation. And then uh, out will come uh, classical uh, data, which we can then interact with as it comes back out of that quantum computer. And you can see that there's a classical port, a two-way port uh, on the far left there. It's that orange color, right? Uh, another thing to note is not only are we going to be talking about everything outside of that or to the left of that classical port, um, but these QPUs are oftentimes going to act very similar to GPUs. There are differences, but you will start to see situations where you will begin to stack or put them in parallel in order to get more power out. This is a, a, a field of budding research. Um, all right, so software architecture for managing classical system complexity. So first off, we define quantum, what is software architecture? Well, as stated by uh, a book that uh, some of our fellow SEI members have written, uh, the software architecture of a system is a set of structures needed to reason about the system, which comprise of software elements, relations among them, and properties of both. And the main thing to think about here is that this top reason as to why you need software architecture is it gives you the ability to reason about the system as a whole. And yes, the, the second, perhaps most important, is right underneath of that, where you can actually inhibit or enable uh, certain quality attributes. But right now, even reasoning about systems that are using quantum computers is almost impossible. Uh, we found that very few people have a vernacular that even allows them to communicate their needs, wants, and 
and hopes of what these systems could potentially look like. Uh, and the key quality attributes that we think are uh, going to be extremely important for quantum computers are performance, security, modifiability, reliability, usability, and, op and interoperability. Now, uh, quality attributes themselves are a measurable or testable property of a system that is used to indicate how well the system satisfies the needs of its stakeholders. Right? And so, there's, there's, again, there's uh, dozens of these, but these are oftentimes the most uh, important ones that we have found within the community. Software architecture for quantum systems. Right. And so our attempt here was to find the intersection between software architecture and these systems using quantum computing. Right. And this is going to be very important if you want to navigate, create, and understand the quantum classical interfaces. If you want to be able to identify uh, quantum uh, applications and the specific quality attributes for those. Um, maybe you need to know whether or not you want to use a quantum or a classical uh, computing resource for that problem. That choice is going to constantly need to be made, especially as classical computing is a growing field in itself, right? We're seeing improvements in classical alongside the improvements in quantum. And there may be times where uh, in this horse race, classical uh, quantum overtakes classical, and then classical overtakes quantum for certain problems. Um, of course, we also want to be able to, as we're building these systems or uh, integrating these systems, we want to be able to design for specific quality attributes, you know, leave no quality attribute behind. Um, and then we want to be able to build robust systems for these quantum, for their quantum hardware. Uh, quantum hardware is changing constantly right now. There's multiple different types of technologies. There's uh, superconducting qubits, there's ion traps, there's photonics uh, uh, qubits, there's cold atoms, and a couple more, right? Um, and so not only do you have to handle the fact that one of those might dominate over others, but that in the future, maybe they are useful for different applications, and you'll actually have to have a heterogeneous hardware situation. And you need a, you need a classical system that can use multiple different types of hardware. And as they improve, that hardware is going to develop and uh, it's going to change, and you're going to have to target that. Um, optimizing compatibility across quantum development platforms. And with that, there are multiple vendors. And uh, if you want to change your hardware, you are likely going to have to uh, have software that can move uh, across development platforms, move across uh, languages, uh, and potentially uh, compile down to uh, some sort of uh, intermediate representation that goes to all of them. Right. Uh, this year, uh, we experienced a lot of challenges into this, uh, uh, at, for this project and for this field of research. So the first thing that is probably most important and obvious to most is that uh, quantum computers aren't very strong right now, right? Um, they have yet to really show any advantage over uh, classical uh, computers. And uh, they've yet to show any uh, advantage over classical computers. Uh, and so attempting to find systems that are already using them and study those systems is uh, nigh on impossible at the moment. You have to do a lot of looking into the future and comparing and using current classical systems as a base case and seeing what we expect to happen as we grow these uh, quantum computers. Um, not only that, but when I... Uh, you look at the quantum computers, uh, they are using a completely different style of physics, different style of, of algorithms, and building the knowledge base for somebody to have both software architecture and quantum computing is a very difficult intersection. And again, with that is that the immensity of this, uh, of this research landscape is just is huge. There, there's uh, many different caveats. There's much that's unknown. Uh, especially from the software architecture side towards the quantum and the quantum towards the software architecture. Um, you know, again, they're based on different physics. Uh, these have to deal, uh, these computers 
have a lot of noise. They are impacted by their physical environment in ways that we don't have to worry about with classical computers. And the space is rapidly evolving, right? Uh, not only are we seeing rapid e evolving in the hardware, which we've already spoken about, but we're also seeing it in the algorithms. New algorithms are coming out, new ways of approaching algorithms, new way of optimizing for these algorithms, right? And so the full stack is constantly moving underneath. And when you're viewing the world at the, at the top of the abstraction level, attempting to actually uh, maintain sanity when everything underneath of you is moving is, is a challenge. All right, and so uh, throughout the last year, we've kind of built a picture of what the current state of this field is. Um, and at the end of it, we uh, hosted a workshop on software architecture concerns for quantum, uh, abbreviated to WOSAC, which, was a, uh, which we gave at IEEE Quantum Week on September 21st. The purpose of this was to introduce software architecture for quantum systems to this uh, conference, which uh, was a unique workshop, it was a unique approach. Uh, and the approach that we took during this workshop was to evaluate software architecture tactics for quality attributes. During this workshop, we had 30 attendees from across the world, uh, and we broke off into three working groups that self-formed around and spoke about the quality attributes of usability, testability, and maintainability. Uh, overall, coming out of the workshop, I think the consensus was that this is a nascent field that's going to require more attention, attention moving forward. There's just not enough knowledge on this. Uh, and again, looking more specifically at these lessons learned from this field, is that there is a, a bit of a gap. Like we, we noticed that most people are not adopting uh, this technology. And, Again, this makes sense because adopting this technology isn't going to be currently useful for most, uh, uh, most entities because uh, there's not a lot of practical use, there's not a lot of practical advantage over classical computing. And so most, uh, most adopters of this technology are either innovators or attempting to jump that chasm, attempting to push this into uh, practicality. And the rest that are early adopters are expecting there to be practicality pretty soon and are preparing for the moment that that happens. Um, with the companies that we spoke with, uh, most were aware that quantum computing existed, but very few had really invested in the uh, technology uh, as of yet. They might have one or two people that are taking classes or uh, reading up on it in their own free time. Uh, software architecture uh, does have the tools to, in, to, to integrate quantum computers into classical systems. And this is not to be unexpected. Like software architecture is a known field. It's been around for several decades at this point. And uh, while the tools themselves might have to be used in slightly different ways or stretched, uh, there's no evidence that there's anything that these system, these quantum systems are bringing into these classical systems that uh, can't be handled. Uh, we also found no specific quality attributes that were unique to these systems or that they uh, weren't beholden to. Quality attributes uh, are definitely still there, and while they might, uh, some might have more priority over others for these systems, such as security, might be uh, more important for quantum systems than other systems. Uh, they're, they're not unique. Um, another uh, point of interest is that almost all access right now is th uh, for qu to quantum computers, the physical ones and not simulators, is through the cloud. Uh, and it's generally through quantum computing as a service. And there are, there is evidence that this one day will change, right? As uh, as these become bigger, uh, more useful compute, it appears that there are going to be reasons, security and privacy being one of them, as to why um, entities don't want to have their machines uh, offsite. And the last one, which uh, I think is uh, a, a bit 
uh, unclear at first is the fact that uh, machine learning algorithms and other statistical algorithms show a lot of similarities to quantum computing algorithms. The way in which they work, uh, the, w the way in which they return information, so their input and output into those algorithms are very similar to the way you have to think about quantum algorithms. And there's uh, a very similar way in which you have to allocate resources. And so I think there, uh, especially into the future, we, we already noticed there's some, but into the future, there's going to be a lot to learn from machine learning uh, software architecture that will uh, be useful for quantum computing. Um, again, um, our effort over the last year into this field is that we uh, facilitated a workshop. We had several papers that we accepted and reviewed and uh, gave at that workshop. Uh, we authored a blog, blog post. I do suggest you check it out, uh, talking about the need for uh, software architecture when using quantum systems. And then um, we've worked with early adopters to understand their needs and approaches to this problem. Um, the, most, the largest concentration of individuals looking at this specific intersection of software architecture and quantum computing uh, reside in Europe and the US. Looking into the future, the research community is going to be moving towards these research topics, right? They're going to want uh, another workshop uh, next year. Uh, they're going to start looking into detailed tactics for quality attributes on quantum systems. And then after that, they're, they're, this is where they could potentially go. They could start going towards understanding the latency numbers that uh, every quantum pro programmer should know, right? Like how, how slow is a qubit? How slow is my compilation time? Everything there. Uh, all the way down towards evolution of patterns and the, uh, getting into more esoteric uh, types of technology outside of quantum computing, which is going to be somewhat similar, which is going to be like quantum communications and quantum sensing. Uh, this is where the research community is headed, and we're hoping to be a part of that. And yeah, aiding me with this uh, last year's worth of effort uh, was, well, yours truly, and then Rick Kasman, our software architecture research expert, Andrew Mellinger, our principal engineer, and Jason Larkin, our quantum computing senior researcher. Uh, if you have more questions on this or you'd like to work with us on this topic, please email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. And I uh, appreciate your time. Have a good day.